again giving you the news ages later. <laughs> Scotland's former First Minister Alex Salmon dies age 69. You know what? I'm having fun, so I'm just going to keep saying it until I get told to stop. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Well then, you could be entitled to compensation. Nobody likes getting lowballed and given the runaround while at their lowest. And I know what it's like to be left stressed out of my mind and buried in paperwork while trying to keep a case moving forward. It is very, very hard. There must be an easier way. Well, Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, is there to streamline the entire process so that you can keep up with everything from your smartphone if you become their client. All you have to do to get started is answer a few questions and then Morgan & Morgan will get the ball rolling with a free case evaluation and from there a crack team picked from a roster of over a thousand lawyers across all 50 US states will take care of the rest. And if having a team of lawyers, paralegals and investigators isn't enough, then 24-7 support is available for more than six cohorts of support staff, or almost 4,000 if you're not rome -pilled. Point is, there will always be someone on hand to answer any questions that you might have. And with this much manpower at their disposal, you can be sure that Morgan & Morgan will be able to fight for the best result possible, having already recovered over $20 billion for more than 3 million clients. But if Morgan & Morgan is not able to win your case, then the fee is completely free. So, if you've been seriously injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan by going to forthepeople.com slash countdankula or clicking the link down in the description to get started on your claim. Uh, Scotland's former First Minister Alex Salmond has died suddenly at the age of 69. Died suddenly, remember that. Uh, the former MP and MSP who led the country between 2007 and 2014 became ill while attending an, an international conference in North Macedonia. The North Macedonian government said Mr Salmond had lost consciousness at the Inex Ol Olgica Hotel near the city of Orid at about half three local time on Saturday. Local media reports said he collapsed during a lunch and was pronounced dead at the scene. The Alba party, which he led, believed the cause of death to be a heart attack, according to the Press Association news agency. Given his age and also his proportions, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be inclined to believe that. Uh, tributes have poured in from across the political spectrum, with Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer describing him as being a monumental figure of Scottish and UK politics. Salmon's successor as First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, <laughs> she, uh, let's see what Nicola has to say, said that he had been her mentor and that for more than a decade we formed one of the most successful partnerships in UK politics. And then you heard he was thinking of coming back to the SNP because you are more concerned with letting men get changed next to little girls than actually achieving Scottish independence and you panicked and then you got a lot of women in the party to start me tooing him. And you weren't even very good at it because when it finally went to trial, all of it was proved as bogus and Alex Salmond was given half a million pounds in compensation for false accusations made against him. You've a cheek. Uh, King Charles said that he and the Queen were greatly saddened to hear of Salmon's sudden death, adding his devotion to Scotland drove his decades of public service. We extend our deep condolences to his family and loved ones at this time. Salmon led the pro-independence side ahead of the referendum in 2014 and resigned as First Minister after Scottish, Scottish voters backed remaining in the UK by 55% to 45%. That 45% number is actually going to be a lot lower now because... Everyone hates the SNP. Even friends of mine who have been like die hard, ride or die SNP supporters just hate the SNP now because they don't really care about independence anymore. They're more interested in migrants and trannies and <laughs> just all that other stuff. That That's all they care about. Like, S like independence is just like an afterthought to them. And also what the SNP want isn't really independence because they want Scotland to leave and then immediately join the EU. The EU. So taking the reins from England and handing them to Brussels instead. You know, they're fine being a dog. They just want to change the owner. It's fucking stupid. Uh, 
He had led the SNP to power when they won the Scottish Parliament election in 2007, having previously been the party's leader between 1990 and 2000. Salmon, Scotland's first pro-independence first minister, then led the SNP to an unprecedented majority in the election four years later, which paved the way for the referendum to be held. Under his leadership, the Scottish Government also introduced popular policies including free NHS prescriptions and free university tuition fees for Scottish students. They are not free, they are paid for by your taxes, which is why prices and taxes in Scotland are higher, in fact, the highest, uh, than the highest in the UK. That's it. That's it. And also, the NHS here is fucking terrible. It's so bad. You go to A&E and you're waiting, like, minimum 11 hours to get seen in A&E. It's just, it's just rotten. Yeah, Scotland has the highest prices everywhere, which is why companies, which is why Scotland has a job problem, because why would a company open a factory in Scotland and pay higher taxes when they could just open it in England where the taxes are cheaper? See, this is the downsides of, oh yeah, we get all this free stuff for now, but what's going to happen is with higher taxes, that doesn't attract future investment and future businesses. So yeah, it'll be nice for now, and then the money will run out, as it always does with welfare states. Uh, after quitting as First Minister, he had a spectacular fallout with Sturgeon over her government's mishandling of harassment complaints against him. Salmon was also cleared of sexual offence charges after a trial in Edinburgh in 2020. That's the one I was talking about. He had been charged with 13 offences, including attempted rape, but was acquitted of all of the charges against him after two weeks of evidence at the High Court. The women who made the allegations against Salmond, which dated back to his time as First Minister, had included an SNP politician, a party worker, and several current and former Scottish government, civil servants and officials. During his evidence to the court, he said the claims made about his alleged conduct were deliberate fabrications for a political purpose or exaggerations because one thing that I have heard is allegedly the women that were making the accusations were being coached. That's just something that I heard. They were being told what to say. Uh, in his closing speech to the jury, Salmon's lawyer said that the former First Minister could certainly have been a better man, but had not committed any crimes. After quitting the SNP, Salmon set up an alternative independent supporting party called ALBA, of which he was the leader. Now, ALBA are going to be in a lot of trouble, right? Because Salmon, because he was the guy that brought the referendum in the first place, he was the face of the SNP for a very, very long time, so he had quite a cult of personality about him. So basically, when he took a bunch of people over to the Alba party, they were there for him, right? It's, it's basically, remember what happened to UKIP when Farage stabbed all of us in the back? <laughs> That man, basically, when Farage jumped ship, he took all the voters with him because the people weren't really in it for UKIP, they were in it for Farage because they really liked Nigel Farage. It's the exact same thing with Alba. So the fact that Alex Salmon has passed away, the Alba party is now going to be in very serious trouble because he was the party. You know, just the same as Farage was Mr. Brexit, Alex Salmon was Mr. Referendum. You know, he's the only guy that actually managed to bring a referendum to Scotland. So... I don't know what's going to happen with Alba now, but they're definitely going to lose a lot of clout now that uh, Alex Salmon's gone. The party could be over, for all we know. But he also hosted his own show on the controversial Russian broadcaster RT, but suspended it following the invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Alba has approached the UK Foreign Office for, for help in returning Salmon's body to the UK. I believe there was a lot of fuckery with that because the RAF, etc., uh, weren't going to do it. But apparently a private pilot has volunteered to fly over there and bring the body back. So I believe, I believe, double, double... Double check on that. Uh, its deputy leader, Kenny McCaskill, described Salmond as being the outstanding Scottish politician, not just of his generation, but for generations far before, and said he had possessed extraordinary charm and a common touch which endeared him to so many in Scotland. Paying tribute to her former political mentor, Sturgeon said that she was shocked and sorry to learn of Salmond's death. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. You were, like, nice. Nice. And watch, there's probably going to be a bunch of accusations that come out of the SNP now going, oh, here's a bunch of other stuff he did, just, just wait for it. Uh, she added, obviously I cannot pretend that the events of the past few years which led to the breakdown of our relationship did not happen and it would not be right for me to try. However, it remains the fact that for many years Alex was an incredibly significant figure in my life. He was my mentor and for more than a decade we formed one of the most successful partnerships in UK politics. 
and then you tried to destroy his life with a bunch of lies because you were worried that he was a threat to your power. But anyway, First Minister John Swinney said he was deeply shocked and saddened at the news and extended his condolences to Salmon's wife Moira and his family. Swinney added, Alex worked tirelessly and fought fearlessly for the country that he loved and for her independence. He took the Scottish National Party from the fringes of Scottish politics into government and led Scotland so close to becoming an independent country. Former First Minister Hamza Yusuf, ah who cares? Who gives a shit what Hamza has to say? He's irrelevant now. Uh, said he and Salmond had obviously had our differences in the last few years, but praised the enormous contributions he made to Scottish and UK politics. The Scottish Parliament has lowered its flags as a mark of respect to Salmond. Yeah, Salmon was born in Hogmanay, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's the Scottish New Year, in 1954 in Linlithgow and went on to study economics and medieval history at the University of St Andrews. I was actually... I was actually just there this weekend, uh, where he joined the SNP almost immediately after arriving in 1973. He later worked as an assistant economist for the UK government's Department of Agriculture. <coughs> I think I've finally got rid of that bloody cold. It's just hanging on. One thing that I'm hearing for everybody that's got this bloody cold is it hangs on you for like a month which is weird, it's some kind of super cold, uh, and fisheries for Scotland for mo before moving on to the Royal Bank of Scotland, where he worked for seven years as an economist, eventually coming to specialise in oil and gas. He served in the SNP as the SNP MP for Banff and Buchan between 1987 and 2010, and was elected party leader in 1990. Salmond was elected to the Scottish Parliament when it was created in 1999, but stood down as party leader a year later, before returning as leader in 2004. Sir Keir Starmer describes Salmond as being a monumental figure of Scottish and UK politics. This is all just repeating itself now. The Prime Minister added, as First Minister of Scotland, he cared deeply about Scotland's heritage, history and culture, as well as the communities he represented as MP and MSP over many years of service. My thoughts are with those who knew him, his family and his loved ones on behalf of the UK government. I offer them our condolences today. Starmer's predecessor as, Br as Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said, Alex Salmond was a huge figure in our politics. While I disagreed with him on the constitutional question, there was no denying his skill in debate or his passion for politics. May he rest in peace. Now, I am a Scottish nationalist. Now, when I say that, I mean an actual nationalist, as in no part of the Union, but also not in the EU. And I feel that, you know, Scotland should be tailored towards the Scottish people. The actual... Scottish people, not the new Scots, as people have taken to calling them. But still, it is a very, very sad loss for the actual Scottish nationalism movement. Not the Scottish nationalism movement, TM, the actual nationalist movement, because I do feel that Scotland should be an independent country. Sorry, not sorry. But still, it's very, very sad. And basically, you know, as far as Scotland getting, getting our independence, this was the only guy who actually came kind of close.